belongs to you. Now to see what your imp can do. Press and hold the options button and your imp will snap to the center of the screen. Don't be afraid. Press and hold the options button. Yes, great. Your imp responds to the smallest movements of your wireless controller. That's because it's attached to the controller's motion sensor. You only need to move the controller a teeny tiny amount to get your imp to respond. Go on, move your imp around a bit. Think of the light bar on the front of the controller as a flashlight beam conducting your imp. You see that little cluster of creativity? Move the pointy part of your imp to touch it. That's it. Now, collect those two clusters at the top and bottom. See how that feels. Yes, magnificent. You can also nudge the imp against the edge of the screen to recalibrate it. Anytime your imp gets unruly, press and hold the options button to recenter it. Now, let's play with the Dreamiverse. See if you can catch all those dancing shapes. Unleash those colors and sounds. found the wall of doubt. Don't worry, everyone doubts themselves in the beginning. See that loose brick? Try using the pointy tip of your imp to grab hold of it. Press and hold the button shown to grab it. Dreamer? Have you fallen asleep? That's it. Pull that wall down. Look at that brick. Who does it think it is? Get rid of it! Your idea's getting away. Chase it down. Somewhere. Oh, more barriers. Cast them aside. Dark. The 
only source of energy is you. What can you do? Dream. Ah, we have light. A good start. If only we had a way of exploring this place. Now we're really getting somewhere. Hmm. There must be some way to get up there. Great work. We're so close. Ah, look at that seedling. The dream of us loves to help things grow. This is your very own home space. You'll always start dreaming from here. As you can see, my little cone friend is happy to help you wander around. You got a prize bubble. Well done. There's a lot more around. They've got all sorts of useful goodies in them. See if you can find a few. Excellent finds. Now for the entrance to the dream of us. Press the set. So much to see. Decisions, decisions. Choose. Need a little inspiration? When we need new ideas for the dream of us, we have a jam. We thought you might like to do that too. Every so often, we set a topic we're curious about. And anyone can make and submit a dream on that topic. Or you can just play through the current entries and see which ones you like. When time is up, we'll feature the dreams the community love the most. Go on, give it a try.
Ah, the home space editor. A great place to start your creative journey. We're still working on this right now. In time, you'll be able to put things you've made here so it feels like your own. explore the wilds of the Dreamiverse, slipping and sliding through the strangest and most wonderful ideas and creations. Lose yourself in the kaleidoscope of games, animations, music videos, and all sorts of worlds and experiences made by dreamers. Ah, a nice little spot to show everyone your best self. And a place for your fluffy, impy friend to live. Make yourself comfortable. Go on in. He won't bite. Promise. So you want to learn the ropes of dream shaping, but you don't know where the tools are on the shelf, or how to use that intriguing gadget, or you want to know what that strange contraption over there does. Architect, assist us. Ah, hello, Architect. Hello, Queenie. Uh, why am I a squirrel? Just a temporary physical form for you. I like it. It's cute. Well, thank you. It's better than the last one. Now, show this Dream Shaper how to unleash their creative powers. Done! Follow me, Dreamer. Oh, it's so exciting that you're here. I have been really looking forward to this. There is so much to show you. Gameplay, animation, art. There's no limit to what's possible. This is the Dreams Workshop. Which controller do you have? I hope you've got your imp under control. I've got some spectacular tricks to show you, and some that are just all right. Make sure you follow the steps carefully if you want to get the most out of this tutorial. It's not just about getting to the end. It's the journey that counts. Shortly, you'll be in edit mode, creating and editing your own scenes. First, I'm going to show you how to move around the scene. Welcome to edit mode. You can see that we're in edit mode because the assembly mode icon is in the top left of the screen. If you ever need to remind yourself of the controls, select that icon with the X button. And select it again to hide the controls. You can also see the assembly menu at the top of the screen. That's where you'll find all the tools and modes you need to construct your scenes. The assembly menu is opened and closed by pressing the square button. You won't need it just yet, so go ahead and close it with square. First, I'm going to show you how to move around in edit mode, as it's a bit different from play mode. 
to give you something to do, I've hidden a puppet somewhere in this scene, which we'll need in later tutorials. I've left some clues to help you find it. Before we search for the first clue, let's start by looking around. In front of you, you can see a floating island with some shapes on it. If you move the right stick to the left and right, you can look around the scene. Is there an orange cone around here? You found it. There's a blue cube around here somewhere too. See if you can find that. Now try looking up with the right stick to find the pink pyramid. That's the one. Okay, let's turn back towards the shapes floating on the island. My first clue is hidden somewhere on this island. Move around the island using the left stick. Push it left and right to move sideways and up and down to move forwards and backwards. Remember, left stick to move, right stick to look around. Easy. If your imp ever feels off center, hold the options button to recenter it. Can you find anything here that looks like a clue? Once you've found the clue, you're ready to move on to the next step. If you want to re-watch this step, you can. Hover your imp over the buttons on the video to see what they do. Use the skip buttons to move between tutorial steps. Or just rewind 10 seconds if you miss something. Did you find that clue? It was on the back of one of those shapes. Looks a bit like a rocket. I do love a cryptic message. Why don't you look around with the right stick for any rocket-related goings-on? Ah, look over there. On that island in the distance. Those shapes look a lot like the ones in the clue. Go on, fly over there and check it out. Remember, push up on the left stick to move forward and use the right stick to change direction. And don't forget, you can recalibrate your imp by holding the options button. Once you reach the island, make sure you're looking right at the cylinder and the cone. When you're ready, move on to the next step. Now, that looks pretty good, at least from this angle. Creating scenes in three-dimensional space means that you should always look at your creations from different angles. The easiest way to do that is with the grab cam. Instead of moving the objects you grab, grab cam moves your point of view around them. Try it out on the cone. Hover over it then press and hold R1. Pushing the left and right sticks moves your point of view around the cone. Easy. Now that you can get a proper look at it, check that the cone is on straight, unlike mine. Let go of R1 to stop using the grab cam and use R2 to make any adjustments you need. Here's a little secret called nudge. If you don't press R2 all the way down, but just hold it lightly, you can move the cone slowly, giving you finer control. Once you're happy the cone is straight, you can move on to the next step. Hey, look at that, another clue. It's a molecule. I know because I put it there. Just play along with me. Why don't you look around with the right stick and see if you can find another molecule. There's one over there by that island. You're hot on the trail. Hmm. 
It'll take forever to get there using the left stick. Luckily, you can use the grab cam to get there faster. Give it a try now. Hover your imp over that orange cube in the distance. Hold R1 to grab it with the grab cam. Then gently push up on the left stick to zoom right over. Just keep holding R1 until you've made it all the way to the island. See? Told you it was quicker. But there's an even faster way to zip around scenes. It's just like the grab cam, but you'll also need to hold L1. You see, L1 is a very special button. You know the way that on a computer keyboard, holding down shift changes what some keys do? Well, in dreams, holding down L1 changes what the other buttons do. Maybe it's best if I show you. You see that rocket you built earlier? Hover your imp over it. Now hold L1 and then press R1, the grab cam button. You don't have to hold it or use the stick this time. Whoa! Fast, huh? Try it out again on the return journey. Hover your imp over the orange cube and hold L1. Then press R1 to zoom right on over. Now that you know how to move around quickly, see if you can find the next clue somewhere on this island. Remember to use the grab cam to look around the whole island. Once you've found the clue, you can move on. Did you find the last clue? It was on the back of the orange cube. What on earth could it mean? That was my final clue telling... Right, here's the puppet I reserved for you. Let's call her Connie, cause she looks like a cone. We need to help Connie walk through the door to complete this tutorial. Also be able to browse the Dreamiverse, remix elements, or even create new ones. What are you waiting for? Get in there. Want to carry on with the fundamentals? You can also press the circle button to see other topics. Now you've got the hang of moving things around in edit mode, it's time to master manipulating objects. Just as well, because Connie's friend Cuthbert fell asleep in the Dreamiverse and got stranded. Yes, he's a cube with legs. Connie didn't choose her friends. I did. So, we need to fix these platforms if she's going to reach the flag and get to Cuthbert. Before we start, you can switch to play mode to see how a player would experience this scene. You'll always need to test things out in play mode while dream shaping, so it's a good habit to get into. Press the options button, then select play mode with X. Its icon looks like a controller. Once you're in play mode, take control of Connie with R2 and we'll see how far she can go. Start by jumping over to the first platform. Oh dear, looks like it's too far for Connie. Move that first platform closer. To do... We have... Now that the first platform's Now the only thing separating Connie from Cuthbert is the final platform. 
Hurrah! Connie and Connie. Now you know how to grab, rotate, and scale objects, it's time I showed you how to clone things. Cuthbert has managed to get himself stuck again. Luckily, I've set up this scene so that we can use the clone tool to rescue him. With this tool, you can make exact copies of anything in the scene. This makes it one of the most useful tools in a Dream Shaper's toolbox. You'll also get a chance to practice with all the other tools that you've learned so far. If we get Connie off this platform, maybe she'll help us out. Let's use the clone tool on this one small block to create a bridge. Remember how we used the L1 button to modify how the grab cam and the left stick work? Well, it can also change how the grab button works. Hover over the floating block with your imp and hold L1. Now grab the block with R2, and remember that if you press it gently, you can move it more slowly. Now you have another block. That's because grabbing things while holding L1 creates a clone of that object. Once you've created the clone, you can release L1, but don't let go of R2 until you're ready to place it in the scene. When you've found the right spot, release R2 to put it down. You can treat a cloned object just like you would any other element. You can move it with R2 and rotate it with L2. And scale it up and down with the directional buttons. Of course, anything you do to the block can be undone with the left directional button. You can even clone the cloned block. Let's do that next. Hover over it, hold L1, then press and hold R2. You can use the clone tool to build a bridge between the first two platforms. Or you can create floating blocks for Connie to jump on. All that matters is that she can get to the next platform, so make sure you test your work in play mode. When Connie can get across, go back to edit mode. Mode. Rewind time with L3 and move on to the next step. Getting Connie to that third platform looks easy enough. There's half a bridge between them, so we can just clone this block to finish it off. Okay, hold L1 and grab the block with R2 to clone it. Let go of L1 to stop cloning then place the clone by releasing R2 to complete the bridge. Hmm, that doesn't look quite right. Might need to try something different here. Why don't we rotate the clone? Hold L2 over it, then push the right stick sideways. Well, it's better, but now they don't match. We should probably undo everything with the left directional button and start again. This time, we'll make the arches match up by flipping the clone. Here's how you flip objects. First, hover over the arch and hold L1. Then gently grab the arch with R2 to create a clone. Remember, release L1 once you've made the clone. You have to release it or the next part won't work. Here comes the cool bit. While still holding the arch, click the L3 button on your controller to flip the arch horizontally. That's all there is to it. Now you try. Hold L1 and grab the arch with R2 to clone it. Okay, Connie. We've almost made it to the door. Ah, but she needs to go across and up now. Good thing you already know how to make clones because we're gonna need them. 
So hold L1 and grab the block with R2 to clone it. Now place that clone a little higher than the original. And you know what? There's a better way. So let's undo that with the left directional button. Okay, Connie, we've almost made it to the door. Let's get back to... Welcome to part four of our Start Dreaming tutorial. Ah, I see Cuthbert has managed to get himself in a pickle again. Connie, how do you put up with him? What a spanner. But with Connie's help, we can rescue him. This time around, I'll show you how to select and group your creations and how to scope in and out of groups. Luckily, someone left behind a block for us to use. Remember how to repeat clone blocks to create a bridge? Well, let's do that again. Move your view side on to the block and the gap. Hold L1, then grab the block with R2. Move it with the motion sensor function to create a clone. Just like last time, let go of L1 while still holding R2, then press the directional buttons to make more clones. If you rotate the first block a little before you clone it, you can make an arch. Use L2 to make the first block angle up slightly, then make the clone angle down. Press the left directional button to repeat clone, and the clones will line up to make an arch. Amazing, right? Let's quickly test that in play mode. Looks great. Switch back to edit mode, rewind time, and go to the next step of the tutorial. Now, you probably noticed that all the blocks, the original as well as its clones, were selected automatically after cloning. You can tell when things are selected because they have an animated dashed outline. But after we switched between play and edit modes, everything was deselected. So let's select them again. All you have to do is hover your imp over one of the blocks and press X. There's the outline again. Now do the same to the rest until the whole bridge is selected. Can you see how each block has its own outline, with a double line where they meet? That's because they're still individual elements. You can deselect them one at a time with X, but it's much quicker if you deselect them all at once with circle. Give it a try. There's also a faster way of selecting multiple objects. Just select one as before, but this time keep X held down. Now move your imp to select the others. Better than selecting one at a time, right? So much faster. 
The great thing about having multiple objects selected is that you can manipulate them as if they were one object. For example, if all the blocks are selected, you can clone the bridge sideways to create a double bridge. Plenty of room for Connie to cross it without falling off the edge. Try it in play mode. Once Connie is across the gap, go back to edit mode and move on to the next step. You know, this bridge would be really useful to help Connie cross to the next platform. Use X to select all the blocks again. If we're going to use this bridge a lot, we can make it into a group. That way, it will behave like a single element and you won't have to keep selecting all the blocks. Have you noticed the menu at the side of the screen? It appears when you have one or more objects selected. That's the context menu. The options it gives you will depend on the situation you're in. In this case, all the buttons relate to selected objects. Look for the plus sign. That's the icon for the group button. The number next to it tells you how many objects you've selected. You can use this button now to turn all of those blocks into a group. There we go. The bridge is now a single element. You can tell because it has one outline around it instead of one around each block. And if you look over at the context menu, you'll see the group button now says ungroup. Use it if you want to break a group up. But we still need it to help Connie. So let's clone this bridge and place it between the second and third platforms. Just like before, hold L1 and grab the bridge with R2 to clone it. As always, remember to let go of L1. Ah, we don't need to test the bridge to see that it's not going to get Connie to the third platform. But don't worry, we'll fix that in the next step when you're ready to move on. Our bridge needs a bit of work if it's going to reach the next platform. This is the perfect opportunity to learn a new technique, scoping in. Scoping in means you can jump into a group and edit the contents individually without having to ungroup it first. And since you can only edit things inside the group, you don't have to worry about messing up anything outside it. Let's give it a try now. Select the bridge with X if it isn't already selected. Then find the Scope In button near the bottom of the context menu. Notice that it's showing you a shortcut for it, L1 
and X. So hover over the bridge group, hold L1 and press X. Now you're scoped in. We can now edit all the parts as if it wasn't a group. If you want to really focus on just the group, you can hide everything else in the scene. Just use the Hide Everything Else button in the context menu. The icon looks like a closed eye. There's also a Scope Out button in the top right corner. This is how you exit groups. Try scoping out now. Select the button with X or use the shortcut L1 and Circle. That's it. Now scope back in again so we can fix the bridge. Just hover over it, hold L1, and press X. I think what Connie needs to reach the next platform is a staircase. So use the Move and Clone tools to create a new one. Is your staircase working? Is your... Now to explore the wider world of dream shaping. store two days earlier. This brutal killing took place while the family was gathered at home on a Sunday afternoon. The day of the crime, the father went to the trunk of his car, retrieved the rifle, and shot his wife as she was cleaning up the kitchen after lunch. When his 10-year-old... while the family was gathered at home on a Sunday afternoon. The day of the crime, the father... Don't touch that dial now, we're just getting started. ...wife as she was cleaning up the kitchen after lunch. When his 10-year-old... Your own hand is not 
too late if you act fast. The day of the crime, the father went to the trunk of his car, retrieved the rifle, and shot his wife as she was cleaning up the kitchen after lunch. in the crime at his local gun store two days earlier. This brutal killing took place while the family was gathered at home. Ну, сейчас у вас у нас есть хапоин, не ли, мы брали на ухо и их поступ. 